Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll teach you how to make use of Ajax.begin form in ESP.NET MVC. First I'll install the jQuery unobtrusive validation package. For that I'll open new get package manager. Here I'm writing unobtrusive. I am selecting the option Microsoft jQuery Unobtrusive Ajax and the installation is complete. Now you need to open the web.config file and look for the key Unobtrusive JavaScript enabled and if it is missing you need to add it. Now let's move to the models folder and here we'll add a new class. We'll name it as person model. Now inside this class, I'll be adding some properties. So the very first property is person ID, which is an integer property. The second property is name which is a string property. The third property is gender, which is also a string property. The last and the fourth property is city, which is a string property again. So with this, our model class is complete. Before moving ahead, I would like to inform you that an article has already been posted on this topic. The link for the article and the code sample are available in the description. Also, if you need any further help, feel free to ask on forums. The link for the forum is also available in the description. Finally, I would like to request you to please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Now let's move to the view and we'll move to the controller later on. And the very first line is defined as the person model class which means the person model class will be the model for this view now i'll be creating the ajax form as you can see i'm making use of razor syntax here i'm making use of ajax helper methods i'm making use of the ajax dot begin form method the begin form method accepts three parameters. The first one is the name of the action method. The second parameter is the name of the controller, which is home. And the third parameter is Ajax options. The Ajax options allows you to define the success event handler, the failure event handler. And also if you need to display any loading image, then the same can also be specified. Basically, the success and the failure event handlers are on the client end side, means they will be basically a JavaScript function which will be executed in the browser. Now, for the loader image, we need to specify the ID of the element to be displayed. In this case, it is an HTML div which I'll be creating later on, and I am specifying the ID of the div to the property loading element ID. Now I am adding HTML table and within the HTML table, I'll place my fields. So the very first field is person ID and in order to create a text box for this particular field, I am making use of text box for helper method of the HTML helper class of MVC. 
here I am making use of lambda expression and I am pointing it to the person ID property of the person model class. So this way I am informing MVC that this particular text box will set the value inside the person ID of the person model class. So in similar way for name field also, I will create a text box and bind it to the name property. Now for the third field gender, I will be making use of a drop down list field and hence I will be making use of drop down list for method of the HTML helper class. Here in similar way like the text box for function, I will have to bind the property and then I will have to add the list items of the drop down list. So for adding the list items, I will be making use of a generic list collection. So as you can see, I have created a generic list of select list item class and in that I am adding two objects. The first object is for the first option which is mail. The text I am setting as mail and the value I am setting as m. In similar way for the second option I am setting the text as female and the value as f. Now the third parameter of the drop down list for function is the default value. So I am setting the default value as please select. Now finally I am moving on to the last property city. For city I will be adding a text box. Again I will be making use of text box for function and in similar way I will be binding the city text box with the city property. Now I am adding a submit button which will be used to submit the form. I am making use of input type equal to submit. Now let's move to the controller. Here I am adding an action method for handling the call from the Ajax form. The return type of this action method will be JSON result as it will be returning a JSON object. Now this particular method will accept the object of person model class as parameter. So when the form is submitted, the values of the fields of the form will be available inside the person model class object received as parameter. Finally, I'll return this object of the person model class using the JSON function so that I can show you how it is received inside the success event handler. Finally, I am decorating this particular action method with HTTP POST attribute as this particular method will handle the POST call. Now we'll go back to the view again where we will complete the client side part. The first thing I'll do is adding a loader. As you can see inside the images folder, I already have a GIF file. Now I'm creating a HTML div. I am naming it as progress. This is the same ID which I have specified in the loading element ID field. I'm adding a class model to it. Finally, I am adding a image element in which I'll specify the URL of the loader image. Now from the scripts folder of the solution explorer, I'm dragging a jQuery file. Also I'm dragging the jQuery unobstressive Ajax min.js file. Both these files are required for our Ajax form 2 function. Now here I am creating a function which is nothing but success event handler of the Ajax form. Now here a parameter response is being received. This particular parameter is nothing but the object of the person model class which is written from the action method. 
as you can see i am making use of a message variable which is a string variable where i am concatenating the values of the person model class which will be later displayed in a javascript alert message box Now I am creating another event handler using a JavaScript function on failure. This particular method also received a parameter response. And here I am simply displaying an alert message box with an error message. You can use the response parameter for debugging and finding out the cause of the error. Finally, I'll be pasting some CSS which is required for the beautification of the form as well as for the loading image. Now we are ready to run our project and see it in action. Inside the form I am filling the details, person ID, my name, my gender and my city. Finally I am clicking on submit button. As you can see the loading image is being displayed. Also, the details of the person model class are being displayed in JavaScript alert message box. So with this, we are done with this video. Today, we learned how to make use of Ajax.begin form method in ASP.NET MVC. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon. Goodbye. Goodbye.